Welcome back to Coffee with Viking in part three of Slaying the Giant of Anger. Cheers. <laughs> Matthew 5 9 tells us God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. It is never good to continually talk about your anger once you forgive someone. Because if you continually talk about it, then you truly didn't forgive them in your heart. You might have in your words, but not in your heart and spirit. That is why it tells us repeatedly to forgive, to move on. Like Jesus does for us, we must forget about it and move on, not holding any grudges. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. In other words, don't allow anger to control your words and cause you to say anything out of anger that you will later on regret. We must learn to reverse our anger by showing forgiveness, love, and compassion. Reverse your anger by doing good, by doing God's work. Don't feed it by doing or saying evil things. Because regret, it can lead us down a path where we become angry at ourselves. And that's one of the worst kinds of anger. Because when we spend time being angry at ourselves and holding grudges to ourselves, it separates us from God too because we wind up feeling up here and in here that we're undeserving of God's love. Which is untrue. It tells us repeatedly that his love is unconditional. You do not earn it. That it, is, that it just is. He loves us regardless. We need to combat our anger by doing good, by doing God's work. We need to combat our anger through forgiveness, through peaceful conversations. Keep this in mind. How can we expect Jesus to forgive us if we can't forgive another? And I've heard this a lot growing up. And as a kid, hearing that always made me mad, even madder, you know. But now that I'm older, I get it. Because the one that really has a right to be mad at everyone isn't. He forgave. He made the perfect sacrifice for our salvation. And here's more food for thought. Anger robs us of moments of joy, of peace, of happiness. It robs us of potential friendships because the person that made you angry could become a really good friend once you get to talking to them. It could be someone that you could lead to Christ or if you're not living for Christ, they may come to Christ and lead you to him and you both find salvation together. It is best to hand your anger to God and allow him to cast it out and let him replace our anger with a loving and forgiving heart, just like his. And that's what Christian actually means. It means to be Christ-like. And if we're quick to anger we're not being Christ-like but if we're slow to our anger and quick to forgive we're on that right path of working towards being as Christ-like in this life as we can forgiveness is key to living a love-filled peace-filled joy-filled Christian life
grudges will always hold us down. Anger, if it is fueled by something that doesn't consume you, and it is towards helping another, like with Jesus and with God, it is righteous anger. But the anger of most of us feel, the anger I feel, I felt a lot growing up that was unrighteous. And to be honest, when I look back, I don't even know why I was angry half the time. I love you all. Stay blessed. Stay caffeinated. And have a blessed and wonderful day.